Alright, buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, so this morning I'm going to beat the crap out of this guy right here. Word of Truth, JD Ninja. Alright, so he, I appreciate the comments, by the way. And he's a tough guy. He can take it. Alright, so uh, first of all, his uh, comment is, There is no rapture as most people believe. No one is going anywhere. Double exclamation point. Alright, I reckon. I reckon I'll start off by, uh, you know, I, I, there's so many places I can go to. Let's go to Matthew 24. Alright, if you, if your doctrine conflicts with this, if this is, par we got parallels in Mark 13 and Luke 21. If your doctrine conflicts with this, your your doctrine's wrong. All right, it's gonna play out that way. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, we are going to be gathered up into the air to meet the Lord. All right? That's, it's, uh, I mean, it's obvious from that, Right there, if the if Jesus is in heaven and the angels are gathering us, we're going to be up in heaven. Pretty simple, basic stuff, really. And First Thessalonians four, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. There's a clue, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord all right so compare this with this gentleman's comment there is no rapture as most people believe no one is going anywhere well if you're not going anywhere you're on the wrong side of the fence all right, and uh, that oh, there's more. There's more I could I could uh, use, but let's continue to listen to this fella. Motherfucker, these guys, man. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto you in your heart, and you will hear them with your ears, and go get thee to them of the captivity. Go unto the children of thy people and speak unto them. And tell them, thus said the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will not hear. I keep saying <clears throat> the same thing to black Hebrew Israelites, Tony Williams, some of these other characters out here, Dave Cole and These rapture retards. Uh, so let's go to Thessalonians now. I'm, where, what the point I'm trying to make is, um, the reason everything around my channel and my teaching is so. Um, different is because I'm not like these guys. I'm not trying to convince you I'm some pastor or some Bible scholar. I've been given this Holy Spirit. I've been given something different. I'm a I've, I've talked directly to God. I don't. I'm not some guy that. All right. 
1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. I that learned through the world and went, well, I know this, and my teacher told me that, and I've heard, learned from a lot of people. I've learned a lot of wrong shit that I had to fix. Learned from a lot of people. Well, try this. Try learning from God. And the way to learn from God is to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God. Because right? if you got a King James Bible, it is from God. It's not from man. It's from directly from God above. And I learned the basic theme of um, church, church, churchy theology. You know? No, I don't know. Love your brother. Love your Lord. Hang out with your people and, and be nice. Be a good kid. Don't steal. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, there's a little more to it than just that. If you love them that love you, let me find a verse before I butcher it. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? All right. Now think about that. All right. Think about it. Put some thought into this. If you love them that love you, what reward is there for that? That's everybody does that. So I'm not so sure that you learned the churchy theology. If I mean, if the churchy theology don't go any deeper than that, then it's a good thing that you don't learn cheap churchy theology. But it's a bad thing that you don't know the Word of God. That stands for all of us, but I mean... The church, the New Testament, Protestant, slash Catholic. That, yeah, these are parallels. Protestant, Catholic, they're not, the, they're, par, they're not parallels, excuse me. They are polar opposites. Protestant is in protest of the Pope. I don't care what anybody says. That's what a Protest, Protestant is. A Catholic is a worshiper or respecter of the Pope. These are polar opposites. Okay? Catholics are not Christian. Mormons are not Christian. And <laughs> I, that, to me, that's important to know and understand. I mean, if you're unsaved, a worldly person, you're not going to see it. Okay? But if you are a man of God, it should be abundantly clear. Church doctrine is, um... It's not a very full plate of food. You get you nibble, but you don't get, you don't get... Yeah, you don't get it all. Alright, so, get, the food is the is Christ the Word of God in Matthew 5 when it says give us this day our daily bread that food is the Word of God all right where, where is this at am I wrong about this again give us this day our daily bread I'm scrolling too fast I can't even see what I'm reading here Oh, no, that, I am wrong. Aha! Matthew 6. Come on. Come on. 
give us this day our daily food. That food is the Word of God. And that's encouragement to read the Word of God every day. Okay? Don't get a poor course meal. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2.11 For the mystery, it's Second Thessalonians two seven. For the mystery of iniquity does already work; only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The mystery of iniquity, the hidden truth. The hidden truth of iniquity. The hidden truth of lawlessness. <laughs> that word's not in the Bible. And I'd like, you know, I'd like to get into that. It's a red flag. And I'm just pointing that out. You hear somebody say lawlessness. But it's not, it's not in Second Thessalonians 2. It's not anywhere at all in the Bible. Look, you can look for yourself. hidden truth of lawlessness this is crucial people what all right so if it's so crucial why isn't that word in the bible i mean that's astonishing really what's 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 lawlessness i, I say it all the time what's lawlessness what's what's your biggest what's your biggest law that you're going to break The mystery, the hidden truth about breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law. What band was that? Judas Priest. Judas Priest, breaking the law. The law is the law of love, so when he's talking about breaking the law, the hidden truth about breaking the law, what, what's hidden about the law? If the law is love, if the law is love, what's the hidden truth behind love? That right, the, the law, the law is perfect. The law is perfect. The law of love. Let me see if I can find something to support that. Oh, how I love I the... I'm sorry. Oh, how love I the law. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Give peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. For he that loves another has fulfilled the law. Love works no ill to his brother. Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. Alright, notice there was no mention of the, the law being love. What's he say? The law is love? Law is love? That's not, that's not accurate. That's not accurate. That's not accurate. 
Let's let's test this out. Let's test this out because it's kind of important. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's see here. Let's go. No 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 no. People who know not the law are cursed, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangs on a tree. So the law is a curse. Right? The law is a curse. And love is the fulfillment of the law. If you think of the law as um, a set of rules, right? And it don't if we don't break these rules, then we're not transgressing against our neighbor. All right, so the law itself won't save anybody. You think about thou shalt not kill. Well, if you break that law, it's a curse. If you, if you were to keep that law, then yes, uh, that's love. Because if you never violate any of the law, then that's love that's the fulfillment of love but you know I don't, I don't know I wouldn't say the law is love but the fulfillment of the law is love and it, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. All right, so think about this here. Uh, we have the law of um, the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses, written on tables of stone with the finger of God. And these laws are the set of rules that we go by, but let me, let me give you one example here. Let me give you one example. Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. Right, so if we go back to Exodus 20, verse 13, we read exactly what this is referring to. Thou shalt not kill. Right? You have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire so Jesus takes the law and he expands upon it All right, he doesn't lesson the law he read he better defines the law all right so the problem isn't going out and killing people the problem stems from the heart right that's the problem the problem is not the action the problem is the heart there's only one way to fix the heart and that's by the Spirit of God to be born of God okay so it's to me it's just all interesting I'm kind of straying a little bit here 
but you know blah 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 curse word curse word blah 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 all right that's fantastic man good job that'll be dj or jd or whatever your name is all right so just a bunch of rambling i don't see anything here blah 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 i don't see nothing here no rapture no rapture let's see i missed it apparently all the cursing and the blah blah knuckleheads the dough heads and all that sort of ridiculous nothingness all right so yeah good job yeah so here's the issue all right talking about brad pitt man that's fantastic good job there you go you got some words in there goofies uh, so I like that word goofies knuckleheads all right good job all right so fantastic all right subscribe if you want to talk about the Bible I want to talk about the Bible but I ain't subscribing because right, obviously you have no idea what the Bible says none whatsoever I already pointed it out. It's not like I'm playing ha ha gotcha. I, I pointed it out from the very beginning. Let's use Revelation chapter 1 for example. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him, even they which pierced him on all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. Jesus is coming in the clouds of heaven. Can't get around it, partner. Cannot get around it. He's coming in the clouds of heaven. All right. So, I mean, <laughs> you call me a liar, but all you're doing is calling God a liar. Alright, and that's fine. That's what you believe. We'll see how that works out for you. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Again, Matthew 24. Shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. The angels gathering together the elect. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Behold, he comes with clouds. John 14, where I am, there ye may be also in the clouds. We will be gathered up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, is that not enough for you? Are you still, well, there's no rapture. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Is that not true? Is the Bible lying? Let's see. Jesus comes down from heaven and we are lifted up into the air raptured into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air it, well, what's what's so hard to understand that's not gonna happen you don't believe that oh what's your major malfunction here 
you just don't have the brain capacity are you a knucklehead a goofy knucklehead you just don't understand that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air you just can't figure that out maybe if you just took a deep breath and relaxed and look that's what it says and it's consistent all throughout the Bible <laughs> it's gonna happen you can lobby all day and all night against it it's still going to happen all right and uh, you know this this actually stems from a prophecy in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 when the Lord said of the serpent I will give I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel see the Lord is going to stomp his foot onto the head of the serpent destroying evil forever alright now if you can't figure that out you'll see it play out just as it is written it's incredible really I know I know it's gonna happen and you're gonna find out so when this happens when God stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory right so when this happens right when this happens then shall God wipe away all tears from our eyes there shall be no more death death is swallowed up in victory no neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away so when does this happen this happens when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up into the air and the Lord stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying evil forever or as we read in Revelation 20 and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them same thing it's the same thing it's not a different moment in time it's the same moment in time at the end of the world when the Lord stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying evil forever and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them right and again let's go to 2nd Peter chapter 3 I mean this is hard core stuff that you cannot refute second Peter chapter 3 reminds us that the world was destroyed by water right destroyed by water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up out of the earth 
up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours all the unsaved forever he puts an end to evil forever he puts an end to death forever there will be no more sorrow no more crying and no more pain all these things will be done away with all right so when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven he will come as a thief in the night at an hour which no man knows in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The works would include just about everything that we are going through now. The whole way of life is going to change for the better. All right, so this is this is crucially important. This is crucial. There will be no more sex. All right, it's going to be much better than sex. Much better. It's my opinion. It's been my opinion for a long time now that sex is overrated. Way overrated. It's a that's a moment of pleasure. And from that moment of pleasure comes all sorts of pains. All right. So think about this here. All right. First of all, in Genesis. All right. I'm trying to hold on to a thought because I'm going to share another thought with you. In Genesis chapter 3 because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they were cursed with childbearing alright they were cursed with childbearing and unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. All right, so let's go. Okay, let's go to uh, the New Testament. Uh, you know, in the, like uh, in Exodus 20, for example. I think this is important. Let's do it this way. I want to put these side by side. Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, love, or I'm sorry, honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. All right. Keep that in mind. In Luke chapter 14, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Well, what's that mean? Here in Exodus 20, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother. And here comes the Lord Jesus Christ, and he says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother, wife and children, brethren and sisters, yeah, even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. How do you sort of, uh, you know, reconcile the two verses? Well, it's pretty simple. If you understand the Word of God and you believe the Word of God. Okay? It's pretty simple. So, when the Lord comes, then everything in this world is going to be destroyed. This world is coming to an end. This world is coming to an end. So, how was this world made? This world was made because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and because they did that, 
the woman was made to have children that's part of this world the sex and the children and the desire to the husband all right the sorrow and like the conception it's all because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because of that now uh, there are children and sex and all that sort of stuff in this world because there are children there are mothers and fathers right let's go back let's go back because of uh, you know because they're having children mothers and fathers and wives and children brother and sister and your even your own life your own life in the sense of this world the way this world is the way we're made to operate and to function and to survive in this world if you don't hate all of it you can't be the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ this world is is gonna come to an end all right. there's not gonna be any more sex after the Lord Jesus comes all right it's you know, even Jesus says in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels in heaven right, there is no more marrying there is no more sex in first John chapter 2 the world passes away and the lust thereof this world is coming to an end and so therefore in the world to come in the life hereafter there are not mothers and fathers and children and brothers and sisters the whole way of life is going to be much much different it's going to be eternal it's going to be everlasting it's going to be forever and that's much better much much better than what we're going through in this world this world is full of wickedness in every single corner every single corner so again uh, I and just it's just my opinion of course but when I take a look around and I see deceiver after deceiver liar after liar people just ignorant just ignorant don't know nothing you know they get it all wrong it's it's incredible too because the scripture is so simple so easy to understand if you believe it and I, I contend that's the problem with the world today people don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands they believe Reverend Schmitty to this guy's point they're believing what other people say the problem with this gentleman here is he's doing the same thing that he's accusing others of doing. He's believing what other men said. He heard somebody say, oh, there is no rapture here. Well, that's what I believe too. Well, he, did you read the Bible? Because right, the Bible is going to make you look like a fool. The Word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart it's just not words this is not just words on a piece of paper this is not an old Harry Potter book that we have to try to figure out what they mean back then when they wrote it. No, these are words that come directly from God above. Directly. Jesus even says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, just because you don't understand it doesn't change it. Right, but you have no excuse not to understand it. 
all you have to do is believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. It, it, because it's, it's about faith. It's always been about faith. You should know that by now. Really, you should know that it's about faith. Without having faith, you won't have any understanding. Without having faith, you won't be saved. Why would God have grace, mercy on you if you don't believe? Huh? Doesn't make any sense. You look at Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. What are you putting your hope into? The evidence of things not seen. Check this out. In 27 times we got the word faith from all the way from the beginning to the end. It's always been about faith. Always. It's always been about faith. All right. That hasn't changed. And if so, if you don't have faith, don't expect to understand. Right? And consider this, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The simplicity of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ.